Jim, how you doing? Oh, I'm great. I'm just watching retards getting beaten in the street. How is that not a great fucking Saturday? It's amazing. It's, oh, it's always a good time. I actually, yeah. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's turned out pretty well, I have to say. I've I, never seen Antifa get their shit knocked around uh, this much in, it's been like a year. But watching the live streams for like the last three or four hours, they must have went after the Patriot Pair guys or whatever they're called like 15 times. And every single fucking time with bats and metal bars and fireworks and eggs and pepper spray and bottles, they still got their shit kicked in. Badly, too. Like, like yeah, I think every, you, it was bad. They rushed them and every time they would throw them back like two blocks. It was, and that, it was that, that Rufio guy, Rufio the Super Chat, Rufio. like he went fucking beast mode on those people there there are like three or four clips of them attacking them right uh like the fireworks clip you saw was a different angle of the video clip i put up where it clearly shows them throwing like that that sounded like a fucking m80 uh right into the crowd like and they do shit like that they'd start stuff like that and every time he'd be right at the fucking front of the crowd he didn't give a shit like he's getting nailed with stuff he, he didn't care he just go right up and knock them on their ass yeah that's what you gotta do um that punch that he did fucking he winded it up all the way back and put his entire body in just that, yeah, it was some Looney Tunes oh. shit. I, I kept I, expecting him to Dempsey roll or something, you know. <laughs> like, I fucking lost it. He made that guy go stiff, and when they picked him up, his friends picked him up. Still he was still stiff. fucking stiff. Oh no, yeah, he he completely fucked that dude up, and it, he should have. Uh, I, he, the clip you showed from YouTube cuts it off at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, the one I've got up on Twitter shows what he was doing. There was a dude on the ground in a mega hat, and that fucker with the metal baton walks over, walks over to him, and cracks him on the back of the skull with it. That's what got him to run in there. While the yeah. guy was on the ground, right? While the guy was on the ground, yeah, and he was winding up to hit him again. Defenses, That's why he stepped yeah. in. Yeah, and then he got hit with the baton, knocked the guy, took the weapon. This is the important bit, and I think what'll serve him well later on. Once he got the weapon, right, and once the guy was on the ground, he didn't touch him. He didn't even go near him. He just walked away. So it's not, you know... The difference between self-defense and assault is, are you going to still deal with them after they're not a threat? And he didn't. He just walked he, away. He wasn't trying to kill the guy or anything. He just no. hit him and it's like, okay. Well, he probably like, already did. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking guy isn't going anywhere, you know? Dude. He's going to lay it out. But, yeah, it's just, uh, I, I forgot how entertaining this shit is. Um, like, you know, it's been a while. Like, we haven't had a good street fight in America in, like, six, seven months. And, I mean, the, the shit from around the world, like the educational uh, riots that were going on in South Africa... Or the crazy shit in Venezuela and Brazil, like things have kind of died down. So this was kind of like a nice, a nice trip down memory lane of watching Antifa get their soy pushed in by people that weren't complete betas. Yeah. So do you think this is going to be a, a a little taste of what's to come during the summer? Oh, I guarantee. I, I don't know. Okay, I, I don't know what it's going to look like um, during like midterms and, and just any you know off off kilter races and shit that happen. But I guarantee you. Even if Trump doesn't run for a second term, I guarantee fucking to you that the next uh, election is going to be contentious and it's going to be even more people in the street. So I think kind of like the year leading up to that is going to be real big. So 2019. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, this time next year, we're going to start to see more more street uh, engagements. And, you know, the Portland cops were kind of down the middle on stuff. I mean, they were telling these guys, you know, the Patriot Pair people, you need to leave. We've declared your event a, a, a riot. So we've revoked your permits, right? Yeah. But at the same time, uh, when Antifa started trying to close in on them, they lit their ass up with pepper balls. Like, they did it three or four times. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I, I keep... It's weird. Like, I don't want to get mind-fucked on cops because I keep thinking back to, like, the Berkeley police and how they were complete cunts yeah. and would stand down because they were ordered to. Portland police felt like they were kind of like, we don't want to be here. Uh, we'll just try to separate people as best we can and throw a few flashbangs if we need. It's kind of like a, mis a mixed bag, right? Like, so they were, yeah. you know, pushing Antifa back and, and shooting them with, with pepper balls. But and, and I mean, the, the, the thing is, this was the only counter protest, by the way. I mean, the, there were a bunch of, wasn't today the day that all the yeah. Antifa people were going to go protest? These are, this is the only fucking group that went mm -hmm. out and counter protested. This I is the only one. I actually went out to one. To be honest, and uh, I, and sort of like about an hour and a half away from me, and there was nothing. It wasn't a. There was no counter protest. There were just speakers, and there was like you know, it was. It, there was nothing. It didn't. Wasn't bad at all. Um, there was no one. 
you know, yelling or black clad people. It was mostly just really, you know, liberal families and like kids. It was sort of right. And I mean, these Patriot pair guys basically shit in their living room. I mean, that's what I like about it. Like this was the big day for, you know, a uh, normal liberals, right. Uh, to do whatever they're going to do, but like the black block guys who always mm -hmm. fucking show up and ruin shit for everybody. Like this was their day. We're going to really take it to the streets. And they kind of showed up and they're like, fuck you waved the flag around and then uh, didn't run away when they started hucking bottles and fireworks and shit. Yeah. Now, what did you think about, uh, <laughs> what did you think about the, uh, Mr. Kekistan guy who showed up? Oh my God. I love that fucking <laughs> picture you put up. The, the Kekinello, the fifth Kekinello. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was fucking amazing. <laughs> no, I was watching, yeah, some stream earlier where they, they had some weird issue with the audio. So it was showing a different video, but I could hear the audio of him getting interviewed. And yeah. the guy said, who are you? Why are you dressed like that? And he actually <laughs> said, I am the royal guard of Kekistan. Yeah, and I wanted to reach through my monitor and choke him. I was like, do you want me to root <laughs> for Antifa? Because that's what you're accomplishing dressed in your neon green retard outfit from the he internet. Was, he said he put that costume together with, with $20 and in, in one day of work, I think. Yeah, yeah, it looked like it. It looked <laughs> like it. <laughs> now, he really let me ask said you, that? He thinks he's going to, like, and he has, you know, he has knee pads, he has the shield. Imagine going to, and you think you're going to a street fight, right? Why are you wearing, like, you're, you're bringing out attention. Why, why would you wear neon green and a Kekistan flag? I don't know. Just It just doesn't seem like the most prudent. Uh, hey, don't get me wrong. Like, the what is it? The uh, Based Boys, Proud Boys? What does Gavin yeah, call his, his Proud club? Boys, Proud Boys. Yeah, there we go. Like, they've had some cringy shit, uh, you know, yeah. uh, as far as members go. But, like, that Kekistan stuff is, I think it even makes them go, uh, <laughs> can you stand on the other side <laughs> of the street? You're making us look bad. <laughs> You know, uh, but yeah, it was it was good shit. Like I, I was super impressed with Rufio. Like he just was right yeah, in the middle yeah. of shit all fucking day. He didn't care about what they were doing though. There was a there was a bunch of people just fucking Antifa up, left and right, and they weren't using weapons. They were just like using their fists and defending and themselves. That guy's swole. Did you see his arms? They're bigger than Hulk Hogan's arms. Yeah, yeah that's how you can like, notice him. He's wearing like this yeah. white undershirt and it looks yes. like he's got, yeah, a giant Dude. fucking, I don't even know what the fuck it looked like. He's like, on uh, swole. Imagine standing next to that guy. You're not worried about shit. I nope. mean, you're standing next to this guy. He's going to fucking kill. I mean, like, I don't know. Like, I don't the the, the man is really. a giant. You could hide in his shadow when trouble comes around. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> you're fucking safe around that guy. So I'd be hovering around him like a little satellite orbiting. You'd be like, hey, Antifa, you want to start shit? And then I'd push him forward. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you notice how on Antifa fights, um, they always let their hands drop. Every fucking time they were trying to get into stuff, their hands are on their sides. They, they just take it straight to the face. Every now, what about that time. black guy earlier? I saw that was, you know, we were doing the patron stream earlier. This kind of transitioned into a, uh, like an official stream. <laughs> and I saw your Twitter and there's this black guy that just rocks an Antifa, dude. Uh, and that's kind of how we got started into this. Well, yeah, that's how I got started into it. I was browsing yeah. pool and like there was a thread talking about Portland and there was a WebM and I was watching and I was like, I, there's nobody talking about this shit. It's really yeah. weird, right? Yeah. Uh, and then I found a couple of streams and I was like, it was a fight every five minutes. It was really weird. It was like every five minutes they were getting shit thrown at them or people were trying to hit them. Uh, and they're they're just trying to march and shit. And the one black dude with the dreadlocks, just shit, <laughs> so shit talking weird. fucking everybody the whole time. Yeah, he was um, great. Trump he had, he had the little, he had the little black block bald guy across the street doing the fucking the, the uh, right chop. Yeah, the yeah. second chop. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what the fuck that it was like a mating <laughs> dance. I don't he know went that. on for like thirty-five minutes just doing that. Like the every time uh, he showed it on there, he was just doing that. I was like, the fuck, dude. Oh, and all the chicks, like you could tell what group was part of Antifa by the amount of dyed <laughs> hair. Like it was really easy to spot, real dyed, super quick. Dyed hair and underarm hair. Yeah, yeah, those are the two. Those are the two tells. There's some chick with like some 1940s fucking jazz shoes on with pink hair and fucking just, just looked like a mess. And I was yeah. like, "That's Antifa. Yep. <laughs> I know what side this is." And what about that chick after the guy got knocked out by Rufio? She was kind. Of, she tried to get up in his face. Now, luckily, he wasn't, you know, on some uh, Nathan D'Amigo shit or whatever that guy's name was. <laughs> Uh, who, who knocked out Moldy Locks because she was kind of getting his face. And, uh, you know, you could consider that a threatening gesture. I mean, luckily for her, she didn't. Well, yeah, he and he didn't. Consider, I mean, that's the other yeah. thing. Yeah, he just got he just got done engaging a guy trying to hit him with a fucking metal baton. And she runs up at him. Yeah, he'd have In been just fight to, to lay Oh, yeah, he would have been. He didn't. Like, yeah, he backed off. So, it's good that he didn't, by the way, because they're going to try to charge him with all kinds of shit. Yeah, they're going to try to charge him, but every piece of footage I've seen of him, he was always attacked first, or he was stepping in to defend somebody that was attacked. 
So I can't imagine he's going to get charged with anything that will stick because there's just nothing there. I'd agree. And I think they just, I mean, they're pulling him in because they, they had these people hemmed up. So that was one of the reasons they hemmed him up so they could look at footage and pick people out and, and bring him in. So um, I, I would think he's in a good place. He, he's still probably going to need some, some good representation, but um, well, yeah. And he gave an interview to the black guy. Yeah, the, the I watched that. Guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he's got shit all over him. You can see like egg and fucking pepper spray and he yeah. doesn't even fucking care. He <laughs> was like some <laughs> berserker. Like, yeah, I don't know. Whatever, you know, go ahead. I'm going to fucking destroy you. It's and you think about, and I'm not trying to denigrate uh Bay stick man or whatever, but this guy, I, I didn't see any sticks or any weapons on him whatsoever besides those two fucking hands. Like this guy Indeed. was just rolling in, just no fucks oh, given. Yeah, yeah, it's, he's just throwing hands. That's all he's he was doing. He's just throwing them hands. Well, yeah, with arms like that, he can. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, he's fucking sad. That's all the weapon you need. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. Um, I guess I guess you talked about it a little bit already. But, well, I mean, uh, holy shit! Imagine Antifa's mindset. Like they're already soy drinking little betas, and they're tiny to begin with, right? Compared to a normal, I guess, alt writer or uh, proud boy or whatever the fuck. Sure. But then here comes this man that looks like the fucking incredible Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's got, it's it's basically a mountain with arms, and he's walking towards you to start shit. Like imagine how terrifying that must be for them. Yeah, if he, puts his, if he puts his hands up and he's gonna deck you. <laughs> oh, and I'm get I'm getting shit. I'm getting shit on Twitter from a bunch of ass blasted libs mad that I'm making fun of Antifa. Fuck Antifa, they can suck a dick. Uh, like that that Tim Demotivator guy and Bronx Antifa and those guys. Yeah, yeah. Like I thought you said that Antifa were dangerous, but now you're making fun of them. It's like, yeah, you, yeah, I mock fucking retards. They're I mean, they're dangerous because the police, for the longest time, would never intervene. The black bloc in America and in Europe could do the most just retarded shit. They could break storefronts. They could vandalize shit. They could destroy cars. They could attack people. They could go after the press and the citizenry, and they never got fucking nailed for it. That's what made them dangerous. Over the last year or two years, people got sick of it, and they started fighting back. And do you know what we all found out? Antifa turned out to be a bunch of pussies. That's what's funny. The big bad wolf isn't so big or bad after all. Good. <laughs> Your chat calling them blacked block. <laughs> <laughs> well, after after the, the best hype man ever fucking destroyed him. Did you see what he was like rolling down the in the bus and just out the window with a megaphone? Uh just yell just yelling at them, Trump's your president the entire way. It was fucking he just—he he was pretty quick on the mic. I like the uh, "If Trump is not your president, you are an illegal resident." That was pretty fucking good. Yeah. Ralph, audio muted. Well, y- you got the gist of it. That was hitting. Me right <laughs> right so I, I didn't actually hear that. <laughs> Yeah, you Fuck see, I came, you, I, came, I came prepared for this chat. I've got my little, my little Goodyear tire with my mega hat on, so I'm fucking, <laughs> I'm ready. You are. Loomer's watching. Hey, babe. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> uh, Loomer. Oh no, that's not. Where do you think? I mean, you talked about this a little bit earlier, but where do you think this goes um, from here? Uh hold on one sec. No, yeah, your stream's fine. They're just fucking with you. Yeah. They are. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of curious what's going to be the news tomorrow, uh, how this is going to be spawned, and I'm curious, too, if that guy's going to have any charges brought against him. Um, that That's where I'm looking to see where it's going to go. I don't, I don't know. Are there any other protests really scheduled? I mean, this was kind of out of the blue. Mm, I'm not sure. I'll have to look into it, but, you know, it is. this is the time for, uh, for protests. Oh, uh, you know, what did you think of Destiny coming to YouTube after his 30 day ban got laid on him on Twitch. Somebody told me he read the 14 words out earlier and I didn't uh, hear those. No, no, from what I understand, he called somebody a faggot. And, yeah, um, yeah, that's why he no, got kicked on Twitch. Twitch. Yeah, 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 on Twitch. And then uh, uh, he was talking to his mother and he brought up shooting Cubans as a joke. And those two things <laughs> are what got him uh, booted for 30 days. Oh, I didn't, I, I didn't hear about the shooting Cubans part. I, I don't know. I can. I, I don't watch him, so I can only go on yeah. what people tell me. But I was kind of surprised. Yeah, he started streaming on YouTube. He had like, 
six he to eight k watching. I mean, it was a sizable audience. It was a good audience. Like I tuned in when I tuned in. I think he had like fifty five hundred. It might have went up from there, but yeah. I mean, all credit where credit's due. He had a he had a good size audience watching. Um, but hey, Twitch just feels like it's falling apart. Like you can't do anything uh, on crazy. that fucking platform. Well, like I, I hate to even and you know I play games of course and I, sometimes I want to stream them but like it, it almost feels bad to even. <laughs> even put any type of investment into Twitch because it's that bad. Like, you can say anything. Just oh, yeah, Candy Dandy in your chat is right. He was thirsting for Crowder. It was really weird during the middle yeah. of his stream. Yeah, I, was I saw that clip. We played that clip. Yeah, he was like, clip. yeah, he's he's a good looking guy. He's pretty aesthetically, yeah. aesthetically, aesthetically, That's, pretty yes. fucking hot. And I was <laughs> like, oh, okay, oh, all right. <laughs> Now, last night we played your video uh, on the kill stream, which I had to take the kill stream down because um, some people in our chat were, well, they were a little too, some callers and our guest co-host, now nah, they went a little too far, so it's on SoundCloud. But, they went uh, a little, they went a little too far, did they? They yeah. went a little too far, yes. Uh, I won't go into what they said exactly, but um, just I guess you're, you're like post thoughts on your video and <laughs> I talked well, about I, this I don't earlier. Know what the fuck is yeah, I don't know what the fuck is going on with wikis. I mean, I was just fucking around on Twitter when I saw the guy's the Bulba Garden tweet, and that would have been the end of it. It's stupid. I made fun of it, and I would have moved on. But then somebody's like, oh, did you hear about the CP ring? So <laughs> I go to take a look, and sure enough, like, there's there's evidence of conversations, and, you know, everybody's kind of admitting to it, but not really admitting to it. And then there's screen caps that exist, and people sent me recovered fucking images from Tumblr, so they got them off of that. Um... I don't know what the fuck. I mean, I thought the SCP thing was bad enough uh, because they've they've done a lot of really weird shit. They made the transsexual satellite story. You can't rate it anymore. Uh, they mm. altered the doorknob story, so it's not it's an anti joke now. Um, and just banning more people and doing the same dumb shit. And then here's another wiki attached to a forum where you've got just really bizarre shit being talked about. And then oh by the way, they were grooming underage boys in a secret sub forum. And you're like, how the fuck can you walk away from that? So I, it kind of, it's getting me interested in these communities. I forgot what forums are like. I haven't used them in so long. I forgot how fucking autistic they are. Like I'm looking at the anime news network now and they put up a whole blurb about how you can't do hate speech anymore. So uh, I'm curious what that community is like. I'm probably going to look into that. Oh well, my God. I guess the but, thing that got me was two or three <laughs> or even four days in a row, somehow like a pedo, like a dastardly pedo kept coming up in the stream. So yeah. the day before. It's not just you, man. Yeah. It, it's a it's like, how do these people keep coming up? Like, it's right. Yeah. Every, that, I keep running right. into that too. It's really fucking weird, isn't it? Every time yeah. you turn around, it's a fucking pedophile. Well, no, so somebody in chat was commenting, and, you know, you were talking about these autists and, you know, laughing about some of their posts, and, and somebody says, well, you know, at least it's not pedos, and then somebody else, I don't know if they'd seen your video, the full video already or not, but they said, just wait. <laughs> they said, just wait, <laughs> and literally within two or three minutes, it devolves into uh, Pika-gate, that, that's yeah. what uh, we had christened it, instead <laughs> of Pizza-gate. Um, I just, I don't know. Well, you know, the weird thing too is like, I, I noticed this trend for a while, like Keemstar, when he was doing his drama videos, it was mostly mm -hmm. like, you know, straightforward shit. But there was like a two month period where it was like every YouTuber he was coming across was involved in some weird Minecraft kitty <laughs> porn shit. Crazy. And it came out of fucking nowhere, right? And it feels yeah. like I, this is some weird thing that floats around and people encounter. Because like, I, I'd say four or five communities now that I've looked at, it always ends you know, like the, the, you know, the grand finale is pedophilia for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Keemstar was in the chat earlier, and he was asking for your Twitter, uh, and I gave him that. So you told him Monday, Matt. <laughs> 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 no, it was legit. It was legit. Keemstar. He's like, "Who's this guy's Twitter?" I was like, "Okay, well, th I thought you knew." Oh, and, and then, um, oh fuck! Did you see the furry civil war is starting? I didn't no. see that. No. Yes, oh, apparently, apparently, lawsuits are being filed at Fur Affinity, and <laughs> Fur Affinity is putting down new. Uh, new rules that you can't be alt-right on the site and hate oh, speech is outright banned so it's it started a giant furry civil war yeah so the fur reich versus the antifa furs i don't i don't know man <laughs> like somebody was like have you seen this crazy shit that's going on over there and i took a look and i was like fucking hell everybody is just it's weird there's weird shit going on in the last <laughs> couple of months I, I don't know what the fuck it is you think they're gonna take uh, to the streets in their fur suits and battle it out <laughs> i don't know i i <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know how deep it goes there. Like, uh, I was planning on doing like a Plex Storm thing on uh, for Affinity and Ink Bunny, 
Yes. So maybe I'll cover it when I do that. Um, cause now, it's have you be checked out Plex Storm? We shit. talked about that, I don't know, a few weeks ago when you were on. I think we were on Scratch Points channel uh, when you came on uh, talking about Plex Storm. Have you actually looked into that? And, and you know, No, no, that's the thing. Like, I've, I've gotten swamped with a bunch of shit. Like, there was the SCP Wiki stuff and then um, sure. the Bulba Garden shit and then Games Done Quickly with the dilation stations. <laughs> um, you know... I saw the funniest fucking picture, man. Somebody dressed up uh, Fred Flintstone in a purple wig and uh, with a little catchphrase "Yabba Dabba Dilate," and they'd be spamming in every thread about SDQ. Uh, <laughs> it was pretty good, um, but no, it's just a lot of weird shit going on. I, I don't fucking know. I like it though. I like weird shit. It makes me happy. Easy to get into, and uh, I guess uh, I was just mock. asking because I mean that seems like an amazing program. You know, the, I think it'll be great. I, Mr. Meadow Porn. I think that's what somebody <laughs> called you in the chat. Yeah. That, that would actually be. Amazing. I mean, you can't tell me that's not appealing to have a place no, to go watch a stream where you laugh at the most fucked up he shit, gets, completely uncensored. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. That that is. You can show angle. porn. You can show whatever you want. Yeah. Like, you yeah. You don't I have mean, to worry about that kind of crap. That's amazingly appealing, and it would take somebody you know with. You know, a big audience, somebody that has a, a lot of pull to to get people there. Yeah. So if I went there, you know, maybe there'd be a few people. But um, you know, if you went there, I think I think people would follow. So uh, your get... chat is saying Bronx is calling me out in Discord. Yes, I, he I don't actually use, is. I, I don't use Discord though. You can Where come else? on the Hangout. It's your show if you want to do, do you that. Want, do you want to? I, I yeah, I got like 15, 20 minutes. I got to go. Okay, sure. all right. Yeah, he actually he actually mentioned this on Twitter, and he said actually all he said was yo. And I said, "Yo, back!" And uh, I guess he, I guess he wants a shot at you. It, it, it's up to you. Oh, okay, it's, you better Rufio you. him. All right, <laughs> yeah, I'll go. I'll right. bail him out of Portland jail and have him take care. <laughs> you got, you got. But, but you're down. You're down for me to bring him in. I don't mind. By yeah, the way, when I, I when I message so. when I message Jim, I said, "Hey, we're gonna do 15, 20 minutes. We're gonna finish up the show. Do you want to come in and comment?" So that was that was the pretext there, but yeah, if 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 you're down to talk to him, I'll I'll send it to him. So you are, I'll, and I'll go ahead and send him the link. Uh, yeah, because I'm not doing this on Discord. I know you guys use that. It's a mistake. Discord is shit. I don't know why way, people haven't you, learned this lesson. <laughs> well, you know what? Discord completely cut me off in the middle of the fucking stream just yeah, like they, 20 minutes ago, and it was just me on stream. Uh, I mean, do they have a toss now? Like, did you violate terms? Honestly, I don't know what happened. It just completely killed me. Yeah, it happened last night stream. on when I was streaming too. It just the, the server just died and kicked us all off. Um, I don't know. It fucked it me. Just but l let me ask you. Um, we we also Gator, who's not here right now. He figured out a way to do. Um, oh yeah, no, I, I heard him when he talked about. That. That's actually pretty yeah. ingenious if you can get that working. Like I would a, like to do that. I mean, thing. you've been on the stream several times. I would like to do that where people could take calls. I don't know if you're interested in it or not, but I thought that would be cool because. Well, no, I thought it was a cool idea. Like if he can get that yeah. working for it you, that'd work. be pretty awesome. Yeah, no, it works. Yeah, it works. Yeah, it works. We use um, it already. So we could be on Hangouts and still take calls from Discord where people could still ask you questions and stuff. I, I thought that would be cool anyway. Yeah, on Tuesday we used it. If you're interested. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't mind. That's fine. And and that's the reason why we use Discord is because it makes uh, getting calls so easy. Yeah, that's that's literally it. So. And yeah, but know. I mean, how how many times have we seen Discord completely fuck a group it's, up for using it? It's terrible. Yeah. Well, and, uh, if that happens, we'll just have to make a new one. That, literally, the Discord is is well, there. Plus, to, like, well, you have people coming in who want to. Hey, wait, Brox, Brox, is that you? <laughs> that's Jesus me. Christ, what are you doing? Oh. Breathing oh. into the mic. Sorry, it was too close. I got a, I got a headset on. That's what it is. And why am I hearing myself? Turn off the stream. Oh, yeah, hold on. A second. God. Yeah, your chat's talking shit about Skype. Skype is superior to Discord chat. You know what? I used to. I think it actually is. Yes. Because it limits the amount of people you interact with. I think that's the biggest fucking problem with Discord. There's too many fucking people in one room. How many? We have a ton right. of people in there. Like, Bronx, what are you doing, man? You're blowing it. You're really blowing it right oh, now. Man, your mic, his mic is really bad. Jesus Christ, I'm gonna have to mute him for a sec. This is. I thought he was. Doing, I thought that was like Morris Code and Static. Maybe. He's trying to tell <laughs> <laughs> like so this is your here. shot, man. What are you doing? Oh man. Oh, they're calling him Bronx Boomer in the chat. Yeah, can I? Okay, now now you're. Test. You, Yes, yes. Oh, okay, can. clear, no echo, no breathing? Yeah, you're, you sound you're, good. You're really, really okay. loud, but yes, go ahead. Sorry, man, I'm on a headset. I can't control the volume. I'm going to try to talk lower. That's fine. Yeah, yes, that's fine. Go ahead. The you man, the, man the myth, the legend. The 
that's true. Well, that's one way to introduce yourself. I'd be more humble about it. <laughs> 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 All right, go ahead, sir. You're here. So, Mr. Medeker, you you read my tweet. You read what my uh, my my concern was. Well, yeah, I was reading. Uh, is it? I call him Tim Demotivator. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, uh, yeah Tim yeah. Blake. Yeah, yeah. He he was responding to one of the video clips that I put up, and then I went to look at his timeline to see what he was saying, mm -hmm. and I saw your your tweet about it, and it seemed to be pretty much in line with him. Yeah, but do, do you see where we're coming from? Why that's such a common confusion on this side is like. What, which, which one, which narrative is accurate? I don't understand. Are we like noodle arm soy, soy boys? Or are we terrorists? Were we throwing M80s? Or what, which, which one is accurate? I don't understand. Well, I'd compare Antifa to a tantruming child, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, a little kid that's throwing a shit fit uh, could be dangerous if nobody ever intercedes to stop them from lighting matches and kicking people and breaking shit. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where the danger is, the non-intervention on that part. Uh, but mm -hmm. the second that you put their ass in time out, they're no longer dangerous. My my situation with Antifa or the Black Bloc or whatever uh, in the U.S. or Europe or wherever mm -hmm. has always been that it seemed they could get away with pretty much anything. Like you look at like the, the economic summits where they'd always be out fucking torching shit and smashing fucking windows. You never really heard about a lot of arrests or people doing anything. You'd see them go after reporters and after people on the street and shit like that. Uh, it seems like over the last year, people stopped with the non-intervention thing and started kind of pushing back against it. And that's kind of when the image went from, you know, dangerous, <laughs> tantruming child to, okay, well, it seems like the moment that you actually start to push back against them when they're throwing shit at you or, you know, trying to do whatever it is they're doing, they're not that intimidating. Like, I, I've seen so many clips of uh, them getting their shit kicked in the street when they engage in a fight that it that it's that it's change that uh that viewpoint on who they are yeah but it, see here's here's the thing i think that two things happen here i think number one that we were turned into a boogeyman unnecessarily in the first place and then now people like again have had a little time to and again americans are not as initiated into antifa as because they weren't out there like fucking with the tea party or whatever like it's a relatively new thing they've had antifa in europe for like 50 years so again, number one, they're more developed over there. They're, they're, the police are kind of more aware of them. But there's a lot of stuff that goes down in Europe that's a lot more intense than here, and the cops do act out with, a lot, with like a lot of police brutality, and you know a lot of a lot of riots in Europe are 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 black bloc clashing with police and setting cops on fire and stuff like that. I just don't think that it's gotten there here <laughs> in the states. I don't think it's gotten there yet, and I feel like a lot of like when Antifa st first started popping up against that first like pre alt right mega crowd, that they kind of like really, really overplayed this whole we're like communist assassin ninjas thing, you know? Well, yeah, no, I, I agree. There is a heavy bit of LARPing. And I also agree with you that, you know, Antifa Europe and Antifa US uh, are kind of different beasts altogether. I mean, it's almost like a franchisee, you know what I mean? It's like the, the, the new kid <laughs> wearing the logo, but not really living up to the brand. Um, well, one thing. The, the, yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Sorry. Man. What I was going to say was also that the American right wing is not where you know there is no real alt right in Europe. In Europe, the alt right is actual neo Nazi skinheads, convict, gangster, murderers. Like here, the alt right is like your local frat boy just got red pilled by a JF Garyepi video, and he's gonna and he's mad, man. He's gonna go outside in his chino. So I mean, I think that the the escalation in Europe is mutual because like it's real communists versus real Nazis, rather than like you know. Um, and I'll admit it, like you know, over here it's kind of like in, it's it's an outgrowth of internet personalities and internet culture. Yeah, you get a lot of that. You get a lot of these people that are plugged into the social media stuff. But what I find most amusing, especially over here when you know protests and counter protests are going on, is a ton of shit talk. And a ton mm -hmm. of let's wear masks and, you know, fucking smack people with bike locks or bring metal batons and stuff. But again, like, you see so many clips of them engaging in that. And you think, okay, this guy's committed to doing some serious violence, whoever that individual might be. And yet they, they always fuck it up. They either get arrested because they get identified because people are, you know, fucking figuring out who they are. Or they get their shit pushed in, like the fucking Rufio guy. I mean, he went at him with a metal baton and got knocked out so fucking hard they had to have six people carry him off the street. So th yeah, that's kind of what I mean yeah. by the, the change in image. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, th there is, I, again, I think if you, don't push a, if you don't push back against somebody that's doing something, uh, it, they're just going to continue doing it. And that's mm -hmm. kind of where the dangerous mindset of who these people are comes in. But once you see people start pushing back and they're not as tough as they try to portray themselves to be, that's when the jokes and the mockery start to kick in.
Well, that that also depends on you know. There, there's mutual escalation here. The alt right used to be a much more kind of a mannered, and again, sort of uh, uh, like in symbiosis with MAGA kind of stuff. They were just like a slightly more edgy uh, Tea Party, and then now what's happened is, you know, Nathan D'Amico is not like a, a, a like for example, right? You mentioned Nathan D'Amico. Nathan D'Amico is not a fucking MAGA hat Tea Partier. This is a this is like a, a an actual ex convict. Uh, the same thing with base stick man. Base stick no, man. Wait a minute. Ex- wait a minute. We shouldn't talk about ex cons like that. No. See, what what I mean is that these are these are violent ex convicts. These guys were in jail for serious shit. Like Tobago was in jail for yes. an attempted murder of a cab driver. I think in the city where I live. Which, uh, and, which uh, you fill me in? Which guy's D'Amico again? So I know who we're talking about. Blonde guy <laughs> who punched uh, the yeah. person you call Moldy Locks. Yeah, he yes. took her right in the face. Oh, the chick. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay. He's not Spencer. You know, Spencer. Spencer's a frat boy, right? Spencer is just an aggrieved Republican that met, that metamorphosed into a white nationalist Republican. But, like, D'Amigo is an actual neo-Nazi. He's an actual dangerous ex-convict. He tried to kill someone. Um, he's ex-military and stuff like that. So <clears throat> that was not the guy who was the movement leader at the beginning of the alt-right. And now guys like that. And Kyle Chapman's a very dangerous dude. I mean, he's got multiple felonies. Um, he has a history of violent behavior. He's not just like, again, he's not a tax day activist. These are like real criminals. And when those people start coming into the movement again, it's just going to cycle upward, continue, continuously cycling upward. And even though people haven't started shooting at each other yet, it seems like every time one of these little skirmishes go down, everybody it's like in the it's like in the hood, man. It's like in the fucking Bronx where like shit goes down on the basketball court, people talk shit, and everybody's gonna come back with a gun. Like it's just Well, I mentioned this it in seems, video. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I did a video like a year and a half ago talking about what I saw as an escalation between violence from you know Antifa and uh, if you want to call them the alt right or whoever the counter protesters to them would be, whatever camp you want to put them on, like Mega Pete or fucking what what the fuck is it again? Based Proud Boys? Uh, all right, that kind of shit. Yeah. Like, Man, yeah. the Proud Boys, the Proud Boys stabbed uh, uh, two people uh, in a in a, um, a rally in in Washington a couple of months ago. I mean, they actually stabbed people like like they got charged with attempted manslaughter and shit. Like you know, this stuff is not innocuous. It will keep getting worse. And like you know, no, wait, I, a minute, I'm wait a minute, Bronx blogger, wait a minute. Um, there has been multiple cases of violence on on behalf of antifa people we talk about eric clanton we mentioned him earlier who was busting people over the head with a fucking u-lock um there's there's case after case um what's his name Isn't that, uh, Bam uh, Ian Dabney Miller. In the fucking yep. street? yeah she falarka did. she did that um we talked about ian dabney miller who who beat down some people that we've had on this very show yep. um so it's not just one side you talk about oh the no 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 you're right you're right but again it's it's no, cyclical no. violence i grew up in the inner city everybody's always pointing at the other gang across the street they did this and we do that and they did this and we do that it okay, just keeps well, on blowing what's your answer then i, I don't I, I mean you you seem to be trying to portray it one way and that that's not well the yeah i mean what is. When you look at it, though, I mean, we do see a lot more of this coming from Antifa's side. I'm not, I'm not disregarding your points or saying that there isn't shit coming from the other side, but like, look at Milo at Berkeley. Like, they tore that fucking campus apart. There were fucking fires, shits getting trashed everywhere. You don't really see the opposite of that. You don't see a liberal speaker showing up at a college. No, because again, because you. you... <laughs> you, you're definitely going to get more violence from marginalized people because violence is an act of powerlessness. These it's are white expression suburbanite of... kids. Let's be honest yeah, but... about who these people are. Berkeley, it, ju- they're white okay. suburbanites. Okay, but not, not just because you're racially a certain way or, or ethnically a certain way doesn't mean that you're not marginalized in different ways. These people have different gender identities. People have different sexual identities and stuff like that. Wrong. So, I mean, again, the side that's in power is going to be less violent because they have more soft power to express. So it's but, okay. But they me. had the power though at Berkeley. Uh the 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 mayor of the the city told the police to stand yes. down. The university president didn't, you know, follow through on going really after any of the students. They were allowed to throw a tantrum. I mean, if you want to talk about in that situation who's marginalized, it would seem to be the side that doesn't have uh, you know, the good grace of the mayor, of the police department, of the university, of the university president, which would be in okay, this but case at least Milo or the people that were out there to watch him. See, but this is this is like one of the this is like one of the fundamental anti SJW arguments is that on campuses the left has some kind of like absolute power so that the so that these marginalized people when they go on campuses I, I wasn't making a broad statement though. I mean I'm talking No 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 I'm I'm, I'm contextualizing 
I'm, I'm going to get back to what you just said, but like the, to me, it strikes me the way that when people sort of go like, "Oh, these professors have the same powers as the president" or something like that. Like, if you're marginalized out in the world and then you're on campus and whatever the campus is more sensitive to you, I don't feel like that gives you power just because you have some kind of preference in one context. You got to remember, like out in the world, these people still have to take a lot of shit. So, I mean, their reaction should be then to dish it out in the one chance that they have a moderate amount of power. Like, you're saying I'm marginalized and I'm being picked on, but the moment I have even a modicum of power, I'm going to do that exact same thing to other people that, that seems to make you look like a cunt. Like, if you're bitching about how you're, you're you know, marginalized by society, if you're marginalized by all these uh, different power complexes, and then the moment you step into a situation where it's the other way around, uh, have you ever heard of FIRE, Foundation for Individual Rights and in Education? The guy that owns it. Uh, this little old like Jewish guy from the Bronx and shit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, heavy into like the '60s stuff. You know, he was on the college campuses and mm -hmm. either, uh, you know, really going against like the conservative power structure that was there. And he yeah. said the thing that fucked him up the most, right, when they were talking about free speech and wanting people to be heard and how these universities needed to be dealt with, was that when the leftists that he was protesting with got into positions of power and had the opportunity to really make it about free speech, they weren't interested in free speech. They were interested in their own speech. And they turned around and did the same shit that the guys they were after did to them. And it feels like that's kind of what we're seeing. Like, you, you can't go into, like, this university setting and be like, now I've got the power, so fuck you, white man, or fuck you, gay, gay British guy that fucks black dudes. I'm going to teach you a lesson. <laughs> like, it just it comes off as you're a fucking cunt. Why would anybody <laughs> feel bad for you at that point? Do you believe in the paradox of tolerance? Is that the one where it's acceptable to not tolerate intolerance? Because is that what you're talking about, or am I thinking something yes. else? Yeah, you got it. You got it. Yeah, no, I've I've heard that argument before. Yeah. Good. Does it? Does it? I mean, think about it, man. Like, like if you're literally like, think about it. Like you're in a small group of people, right? Twenty people. Because I think people, when they think of like a group of five hundred people, it's harder. You're in a group of twenty people. And everybody's allowed to speak their mind, but like three of the people in your group are like, we should kill all the Hawaiians in this group. <laughs> you know, like Hawaiians the freedom of shit. those. Let's be honest, Hawaiians are shit. Though. You know what I'm saying, man? Like, I'm you know, struggling. like <laughs> on, a, on, the, <laughs> on that <laughs> small scale, you would go, you know, we can't, we can't just, we just can't make this unlimited privilege because this person is advocating to kill other people in the group or or dehumanize other people in the group or say that they should get less food or something like that do you see how like any kind of any kind of and again i'm an anarchist man like it's not like i'm anti-freedom but like any kind of right has to stop where you start to like penetrate someone else's safety you know what i mean yeah, and we can disagree we can disagree about what that constitutes which is fair but in the opinion of the people that are that are these, I, I like you said are acting out, yeah. your example though, in your example of we've got twenty people and three want to execute all the Hawaiians, you've still got twenty people. So unless they're in a non-democratic system, unless they're in a system where three people find themselves as dictators, the other seventeen are the bulwark against actually, uh, you know, uh, actualizing that thought. Mm -hmm. They could sit there and say, "Fuck the Hawaiians, I want the Hawaiians dead." But unless the other seventeen people in that group are like, you know what? fuck the Hawaiians. Nothing's going to happen. It's going to stay at the level of speech. Right, but that's what I'm saying. If you would let someone continuously make a case, fuck the Hawaiians, then a fourth person, then a fifth person, then a sixth person. That's how genocides happen. That's how it happened to Rwanda. That's how it happened in Germany. But, but, but it's, again, it starts with a small handful of weirdos. Yeah, but in that situation, though, what you're saying, you, you have little faith in society. I mean, what <laughs> you're saying is either people are really stupid and need to be watched by a select group of individuals that are just smarter than them, or there's something really wrong with the Hawaiians if everybody's going to start to agree that they need to be exterminated. And <laughs> to be I frank say, with you, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, finish your point, sorry. Uh, yeah, I would say in a democracy, if you've got people saying something like, let's execute the Hawaiians, and after a month or two, the majority are like, you know what, fuck the Hawaiians, maybe there is something wrong with the Hawaiians. <laughs> you know, like if that many people are starting to see an issue with pineapple loving, maybe we should take care of them. Oh, but but I mean, th just use history as your guide, man. They can always, they can, they, people can always bend and twist an argument for the group that they're speaking to. They can always persuade people of all kinds of bizarre, ludicrous things. Like, you know, I don't know, man. I came from a, I came from a place where you don't get a lot of mileage out of trusting liberal institutions like the cops and the courts and stuff like that. So you know, again, pe these are people who are afraid because they've been failed by these institutions before. And, you know, it's <laughs> someone like Milo comes in 
And again, I know that he's marginalized in other ways because he's not straight and he's, you know, he's he's into interracial dating and stuff like that. I understand that he's marginalized. But, you know, again, a lot of the rhetoric that he uses makes trans people feel like they're not safe. A lot of his rhetoric that he uses makes Muslim, can I Muslim say Americans. Can I, I'm yeah, going to cut you off and say that, you know, obviously I think what Milo said to the journalist that he was waiting on me. He was waiting on the death squads. Probably not the like the most intelligent thing he could have said especially now you know obviously hindsight's 2020 <laughs> when yeah but back, ralph, ralph can i can i interrupt one sec please, with the, in yes. regards to milo with both of what, what kind of both of you are bringing up like you're saying it wasn't the smartest thing to say and you know milo says stuff that makes people feel uncomfortable True. let's be really clear about what milo yiannopoulos is milo yiannopoulos i don't view as a political person i view or milo yiannopoulos as a kind of barnum and bailey guy Yes. Like he knows how to get attention and he knows how to get his brand out there and he will do whatever no. he needs to do. Now, right. let me, no, no, wait, let, you're let me you're stop. right. Hold no, on. Wait, wait, Brock Walker. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. It's my show. Uh, it's my show. I want to ask. Sorry. sorry, um, sorry. Did you, like even him, he didn't expect the next day to somebody to go shoot up the fucking newspaper. But he rolled with it, though. No, he did. He, he did. He, he, he did. completely. See, that's that's where I can kind of differentiate kind of what Milo's game right. is. I'm, I'm not harping on him. For doing it, I get. But people you were think, laughing at him. You were laughing at him too. Oh like, yeah, oh, no, no, yeah. I, I was U-Kip. laughing. I was laughing yeah. at um, Yuki because yeah, they yeah. brought him in, and then immediately after <laughs> he made that statement, <laughs> and then immediately after that, somebody gets shot. But yeah. I, like, I, I, okay, if somebody was really politically minded and they wanted, you know, uh, to be taken super seriously after something like this happened, they'd be, they'd find some way of even maybe giving like a half-hearted apology. Milo was like, "Fuck it." I don't regret anything. And on top of that, I'm going to sue everybody that has a problem with it. Well, I mean, See, he, he yeah. took the Trump. He took the Trump uh, point of view. And by the way, I don't I mean, he just said that to troll them. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say Milo sit here and he wanted to see journalists get shot. I don't I don't really believe that. But well, he is a journalist. So yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't believe that. Yeah, it's he was just talking shit. Anyway, go ahead, Brock's blogger. I can tell you. Sorry. <laughs> so, so here's here's the thing. Here's the thing with Milo. I agree with you that Milo is fame preoccupied. He tried to. Ca- he's very much so like Candace Owens, Red Pill Black, which like they tried SJW to become famous, it didn't work. They try anti SJW to become famous, it worked, and then they sort of lean into that. And then when that doesn't work for a little while, they'll switch to something else. So they're not they're not true. Poli- they're not political puri- pur- puritan. Excuse me. When I see someone like Domingo, he's a he's a real. Puritan, he's a he's a real Nazi. Milo is my problem with Milo is that he's irresponsible and he thinks that you can use politics as a platform to become famous, to become a tabloid celebrity. Why and all that would stuff. he think that? Why would he think that? Because multiple people have done that already. Like, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't understand. Like, that's not a controversial thought. You, you no, to me, it's irresponsible. Why politics is that? decide? Politics decide well, who lives and dies. Politics this, decide who no, eats. No, fuck that. Listen, you're you're here on the stream. Why do you think you're here on the stream? Because you're using politics to get known. Like, it, it, if it, that wasn't the case, you wouldn't be here talking to me, talking to Medicare, talking to others. Like, it's uh, just the way that it goes. Like, I mean. I have no interest in e-celebrity status. I'm just here to I, represent I a set that. of ideas. I don't, I don't believe that. That's I don't it. That. Okay. I've been doing this for 10 years. It, it, no, if I wanted I to, like, make a name. Okay, so why did you, you know, tweet at me and message me? My man, before? how? Because you, I you wanted saw, to speak. No, wait, listen, sir. Okay. Please, please give me yeah. a chance. You saw that that we had Jim on. You you right. saw that this was oh, okay. Let me get in on this. Um, I, I think that you definitely saw a window there, and and uh-huh. it wasn't just you know an altruistic vision of let me put my political prospects out there. Let me put my political views out there. It was like oh, okay, this is my chance to to get more publicity. I mean, and it's not a knock on you. Anybody would do that. I mean, but but that's the truth of the matter, right? There, there's no money in in my positions. There's no fame no, in my positions. I'm not there's give no you the money. I'm there's not give no you social money. status. There's no yes, Patreon you know bucks. That. None of that. There's yes, nothing. You know that. My channel is still below a thousand views after all the. It, 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 there's nothing in this for me but to present the ideas. But you get the publicity. It, <laughs> just, just even. No, being sure, of course. Like, I, do I want my being, channel to be hey, more wait, known? Wait, sure. Wait, wait, sir. What is? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> just even being on the same platform with Medicare gets you the publicity, right? Like, I mean, it's not. Not in my community. Do you know how much this hurts me? Every time I come on this program, it hurts me. You know that, right? <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> the know o- that at all. The other, know the other all. people in my community are not happy when I come on these alt-right programs, when I go on Joaquin's well, show, when stupid. I go on your show. Well, they're stupid. They're stupid because they don't understand the, the, the power of 
like publicity. I, I don't know what else to say. Like um, somebody who says they can't face so and so or they don't want to p- appear on so and so outlet. Well, they're just not that bright because it actually uh, brings attention to their to their cause. So like that makes no sense to me. I can respect somebody who who would prefer not to or whatever. I, for me, when I've talked with people in my own community about it, my point is basically that. We're going to be brought up anyway. Might as well have someone, a person speaking rather than people's idea of our politics. That's the best case that I can make to my own people. And to me, that has value and stuff. And uh, sure, of course, I want to be visible on these platforms because I want um, I want my ideas to participate in all that stuff. And I want to be the representative for those ideas. Well, it's retarded but, not to show up on an open platform because we'll take anybody on this show. And if you don't show up, of course, you're not going to get represented. So anyway, I, I, I'm going to stop with my own interjections. Um, Jim's been here way overboard already. If you have any more, um, Ralph, Ralph, excuse assaults. me, sir. Can I can I say one thing, sir? Yes, sure. I've noticed. Please. I've noticed when you uh, you have two uh, what I'd call like mad modes. <laughs> one is when one is when you start screaming and like swearing and just going off. But the other one I've noticed is when you really want to get in there and you're like, I need this other person to shut the fuck up. You immediately start saying, <laughs> "Excuse me, sir, sir, can I have a minute?" <laughs> Well, look, obviously, it's not about me, but some of the things he's saying... But it's your show, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Some of the things he's saying is... uh, Whatever. Anyway, if you have anything else to direct towards Mr. Medicare, um, I will will take a back seat. Uh, Jim's already here, you know, overtime, so go ahead. I, I, you know, I'm 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 uh, shocked how civil this uh, conversation has been. You know, like <laughs> well, we're pretty civil here. On I don't. The I, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, because you know, I, Medicare has a rep. You know, well, yeah. Contrary to popular opinion, I I talk to people normally. I mean, I had yeah. Bolsey on, who was a BLM supporting communist from Lefty Poll. We had like a two and a half hour mm-hmm. conversation. I'm I've had I've talked to other people. It's not always a screaming match. It's just certain people sure. uh, with certain mentalities. It doesn't even matter the politics. Just piss me off. So that's what sets me off. <laughs> well, let, let me ask you this: when when you look when you look at the at the at the modern left it is, as it is now, where where Antifa is becoming like a vanguard <clears throat> political movement, um, do you do you feel like there's some kind of point where Antifa will? Is there is there anything that you feel Antifa would could do to be more I don't know taken seriously by whatever normies or whatever? Uh, well, I mean, I, I put it like this: like if you want to look at Antifa as like a vanguard of the left, um, I, I've noticed some people have stumbled on a formula that works when it comes to fucking with people on the right. Mm. Um, that's effective. Uh, and, you know, one name I bring up is somebody like maybe H Bomber guy, and what oh, yeah, I noticed great. in in his trend of how he does it is he sticks less on the talking points of, you know, like privilege, like all the, you know, like the college words, you know what I'm talking about? Like the the privilege conversations and shit like that. And he just makes fun of people. It feels like to me, at least somewhere along the last 10 to 15 years, the left forgot how to be funny. They they started Mm. getting a little too serious with their politics and they forgot that mockery is a very effective fucking tool, especially if it's mean spirited and especially if it's funny. Now I don't like all the shit that H bomber guy does, yeah. But he does put out some funny stuff, um, like the the Davis Arini videos. You know what I'm talking about? Sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, that I, I think people like that are probably more future proof when it comes yeah. to what the next trend is going to be. Right. I think the ones that are too up their own ass about like the, the college terms and trying to go out and march in the streets. I think those are going to be not the vanguard, but like the kind of forgotten past. If the left goes back to just being assholes in their own way and making jokes, they'll be fine. But if they stick to this, uh, you know, just this what's seen as Tumblr snowflake shit, it's just going to keep continually sinking them. Even if those are their talking points, that's not the way you get your foot in the door because nobody wants to hear that. They want yeah. to find you to be entertaining or captivating. If you can do that, you can sway people. I've always said it's not on the Internet. You know, on the Internet, it's not about who's right. It's about who's funniest. You need to draw people in first before you hit them with whatever the fuck it is that you really think that's the way you reach people i think contrapoints has been a has been a, a strong uh, balance of those two things of being uh, sort of entertaining um you know uh, sarcastic and and still able to put across some of the harder uh political stuff uh kind of like golden age john stewart type stuff 
Um, I think that I think that people are interested in 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 serious uh, commentary, and you know the people that go to the street is generally going to be uh, whether you're left or right is generally going to be the, like the more earnest sort of reactionary people. But when I see at this point, I I see these scrapes, these scrap ups, and most of the time, like this one today, it just kind of seems like this is like the equivalent of a basketball riot. You know, it, it just when people talk about it, like it's. When people are talking about it like it's a medieval joust or something like that, that that kind of stuff confuses me online. Yeah, I'd like to address chat. They're like, "Oh, you're giving you're giving ammunition to the left." One, I doubt they'd listen to me. Two, it's pretty apparent if you have a fucking set of open eyes to see that that would be a winning solution. Mm. And three, uh, a lot of the people that are seen as figureheads in the left, like I said, are are a little bit too up their own ass mm. uh, with you know the the starting point of I'm right, and because I'm right. You have to listen, and that's the worst fucking approach to take. The right wing used to have people like that. They've just been kind of squeezed out. You guys had Buckley. You guys had you guys used to have like serious right wing people. But you're right; those people were eventually like supplanted by. Well, you like, can look Limbaugh at shit like and... in the, yeah in the '90s, like uh, Gingrich and uh, the Family Value shit. Remember, you mm -hmm. know, it was the right for a long time that was up people's ass about video game violence and about. Uh, yeah. Terrible. Remember, fucking. Uh, well, I mean, I guess you wouldn't say it was right because it was Gore's wife, but that was kind of the mindset. If we need to protect the children, we need to uh, censor yeah. television and movies and uh, music and video games and all of that stuff. And that fell out of favor because people got sick of listening to somebody get up on a moral high horse and tell them this is bad for you. So right. it, it's really weird. I don't know, man. Politics fluctuates all over the fucking place. Um, but I, I just as a, a individual, I like watching street fights. I've always found them fucking entertaining. I like watching Antifa and the alt right fight in the streets just as much as I liked uh, South Africa when they had their student riots, which were fucking retarded, mm. or Venezuela and Brazil when they had people marching up. Those were a little more violent because cops were fucking just outright killing people. But like you know, shit like that, it, it's a fucking trash fire, man. That's that's stuff people watch, and then they they get tuned in and they assign a personality or a belief system to the groups they watch fight each other. So you know, yeah, but but the people marching, people marching like in Tiananmen Square or South Africa, you know, you got to at least give those people some respect because you know a lot of them didn't even put their hands up and they got shot down by this is those weren't skirmishes, man. Those were those were a lot of times like hundreds of innocent people getting shot down by cops for just standing there and saying they didn't want to be like under apartheid anymore. Yeah, well, South Africa when they had their student riots, uh, I can't. What was the name of the fucking college this all took place at? They got upset because there were apartheid white artists that had uh, artwork that was framed in the university. So instead of bringing their fucking concerns up to the university president, they just took the artwork out and started burning it. And then they demanded that all these statues be taken down and that shit get renamed. And it was just a complete fucking shit show. Uh, Venezuela <laughs> is such a lost cause, man. I don't, I don't even know what the fuck they're you doing over there anymore. Fuck South Africa. I mean, if, if, if you've, whoa, lived, whoa, if, whoa, if, whoa. no, no, I'm dead whoa, serious. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If, if you watched uh, Lauren Southern's documentary. If you, if you if you're up to date of what's going on in South Africa, if you're starting to feel sympathy for what the South African government is doing to white people and and just you know landowners in general, fuck that. Like you yeah, think you I have, give a fuck about what's going oh, on yeah, in South Africa? Fuck, you have I to. Watch no, that's that, not man. that's not my point. My point is that well, uh, I'm talking that. about apartheid. Like, try, apartheid. To, I don't no. care. Apartheid's don't care. done. Who gives a fuck what you are saying about apartheid? That was well, Ralph, fucking decades they're, they're ago. They're saying in the the chat just interrupt real quick. Uh, they're saying it was Cecil Rhodes. That was it. Was Rhodes must fall was the hat. Hashtag that was going around like a year ago when they were doing all this shit. Yeah, but they're talking. Oh, about that's apartheid. recently. Okay, I, I I thought I thought you were talking about during apartheid. <laughs> apartheid no, I mean, was, no, like a year ago. Like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Like you try yeah. to bring up apartheid, who gives a fuck? Like that was that was a long time ago. It doesn't like, matter to you, baby. But you know who it did matter no, to the black people that yeah, lived underneath know, it for you fifteen years. You know who it years. matters to the whites? They're fucking murdering in their own fucking land. Oh, are we gonna right get now. into a Zimbabwe for, conversation about starvation now? Don't worry, <laughs> South Africa's going down the drain. Yeah. Forty forty percent forty percent of the farmers like killed him. have been black. Yes. Okay. How could yeah, it be a racial genocide? Yeah, nobody believes watch, that. Don't, watch that get, documentary. Give, oh, no, no, wait a minute. I did. Wait a minute. If 40% of them getting killed are black, but, uh, okay, and 60% getting killed are white, how many white people compared to black people are in South Africa? No, my point, hold on. My, no, see, no, cause, no, exactly. Cause, <laughs> no, exactly. I, firstly, I've seen the Farmlands documentary. I've been following the clips on Lawrence oh, Southern's sure. channel. Of course, I've been following yeah. it for a long time. I bet now, you the point are. is not that, it, that it's not something tragic that's happening. The point is that a genocide is something carried out specifically uh, along no, certain parameters. The, it's a crime wave. It's a crime, it's a crime. It's a crime wave, and it's tragic. Fuck off! You're full of shit right now. 
they have they have a with B, they have a group called BLF that literally wants to get rid of all the white people, take all their stuff because they're owed it. Like, come on, you have to you have to realize what they're doing. It's, it's no, it's don't genocide. worry. They'll be I, they'll be in the same basket as Zimbabwe soon enough. I'm not saying I'm not saying, I'm not saying that it's people. it's all good. I'm not just, saying just that them, it's right. What's rot. happening? No, do whatever. Just let them rot. That that's good. Uh, I hope they continue. Yeah. And let them all that, <laughs> Yeah, that's not my that point. Not, yeah, yeah. That's not my point, man. My point is not that that's what's happening point. is tragic. My point is that the, 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 the government is not the one and it's not a paramilitary force, it's criminals. It's this that's isn't course. this isn't yeah. Yugoslavia. They're, you know that they, she had a somebody from the government on there and they say that they're going to change the laws so they can just usurp their land. And just that has nothing them. to do with people yes, robbing does. them. Yes, it does because yeah, they're, just, they're marginalizing just, the people. Expropriation without compensation is a government policy, and we can talk about that. But mm -hmm. random psychopaths robbing farms and killing little kids is is robbery. Well, you it's think theft. that it's a wasn't crime. motivated by the political party saying "kill the boar" and fucking singing all these songs That's, about that killing song's been people. illegal you, under you, hate you, speech? Yeah, well, fuck that. They're still singing the goddamn song. You fucking that lying clip. Piece of shit. That clip is from the '90s of Jacob oh, Zuma no, singing fuck that, that song that clip is before from the song was. Ago. Ago. You're illegal. full of shit. Fuck off. No, no, Julius Malema no, singing that song fucking a year ago. You're full of shit right now. What's Malema's position in the government? That's, who cares? You, you're saying what's his position in the government? You're saying these motherfuckers don't have an influence on the body politic in South Africa. You're full of shit. Yeah, but see, I could say that about all kinds of shit that's happening under okay. Trump. Say, doesn't well, it? You, isn't you, it because you, people are? Isn't people because Trump hates Mexicans? Man, just whatever. You're making me sick. Well, like, like, um, so no, Mugabe. Just, the Zimbabwe's president Mugabe back in 2017 said that. I don't support Mugabe. I don't support well, who cares? Mugabe. I, I wish well, he, he would go live in government. Zimbabwe and we'll see how this motherfucker would fare. That, that's Wait, what I Wait, okay, to let me just finish my sentence. So the people, the locals that were accused of killing um, white farmers, he said that they should be immune to persecution. And he was in power at the time when he said these things. So obviously there is a government incentive and... You know, the, I think that's racist. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I sure, yeah, Zimbabwe, right, Mugabe's right. racist. You're right, that's Look, right. But I'm saying this... in, the, in in South Africa, it's just different politics. Right, I'm not saying we'll it's get... not wrong. Okay, we'll give you the last word. We could continue this all night. Um, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you, Jim, for for sticking with us. I, I told him it'd be 15 to 20 minutes. It ended up being close to an hour. Um, Thank you. Liquor kicking in there, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just no. It's not even liquor. I can just feel myself getting enraged, and I just I just need to end it now. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you switched. You switched from the sir 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 to fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> it switched. It switched, and I just I just want to end it now. If you have anything else you want to say, please do. No, I want to. I want to thank Mr. Medicare for. You fucker! You know. I'm talking to Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jim, if you have yeah, I, I guess my final thought on just Africa as a whole. Um, I, I think there are a lot of countries that are making some some bad decisions. Uh, I think Zimbabwe <laughs> would be a, a very good highlight of that, where they took away yes. white farmland. And I mean, you could even make it not a racial fucking argument if you want and be like, yeah, they gave it to people that couldn't farm on that scale, whatever. But the point is, they still bankrupted themselves by not having enough food, having to import it. And then they still had fucking shortages and starvation. South Africa's got all sorts of shit going on in it. But I think at the end of the day, we can all agree that the problem in Africa is not going to be black or white people. It's going to be all those fucking Chinese that are moving in by the millions. <laughs> We're going to strip mine the shit out of that continent. Yeah. And then, you know, so I think that's the future for Africa. They have their eyeballs on that uh, very much. Uh, yeah. Bronx, by the way, keep it short because, uh, like, my leash with you is, is really. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Give, give your final thoughts, sir. Yeah. So, you know, as, as, to, as to the Africa thing, uh, you know, I don't want to perpetuate the idea that like the people on the left don't give a shit about those people because they're white they or whatever like Never. i just again yes. and again i've expressed it many times on my channel that you know i care about what's happening over there it's shitty yeah. um okay, and listen, may, you're drawing that's it, it. Out. give your give your thought <laughs> <laughs> so i i just i just think that people should be careful where they follow this stuff because i think that 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 kind of there's certain yeah. ways you can frame things that can really inflame tension yeah. in a dangerous way for people that aren't even in that country yeah. all right thank you Thank you, Mr. Mendeker. Thank you, Bronx Blogger. Thank you. Yeah. Zidane, do you, do you have a thought? Yeah, I have, I have one thing. Uh, two things. For first, before, uh, before Jim leaves, uh, for the anime video you're going to make, uh, I know somebody who has a ton of information on that, by the way. So uh, Yeah, ha have him hit me up on Twitter. I will. Um, I will. 
Um, yeah, yeah. If they got if they got insider information or yes, funny backstories yeah. and shit, I'd love that. While you guys were talking, I was I was in, on Twitter and they they messaged me. And, so, um, yeah. And other than that, the Africa thing, man, you need to really like fucking get some scholarship on Africa because you are just, <laughs> get some uh, scholarship. You are, you are just spouting nonsense. Get get some scholarship. Is that like the right version of educate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Same that, language. That that. that oh. Black skin is amazing. By the way. <laughs> Yes, he's a he's a freaking guest on the show. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you, Sedan. Thank you, Medicare. Thank you, my wife, who's also in the chat. I'm about to just sign off from everybody, so appreciate it. Um, Thanks, mate. Uh, thank you, Ralph. Oh, I'm gonna do a post stream. Sure. Oh wait, I don't get a last word. No, you don't. You're a female. We can't let females oh. get a last word. All right, your dick can suck it. Oh, wait, can I ask one thing before, before you go, Sedan? Where do you do your post streams? I do them on my channel, actually. Um, yes, because uh, my, I, I, I my got B it. channel, he got a strike on that one. I, I, oh, I got yes. a strike for hate speech. Did you really? I yes. did. I don't, I don't mm. even know what I said, and that's YouTube being racist against Bhutanese people. There you go. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's on his backup channel. It used to be on my backup channel, but now it's on on. God, maybe, maybe Brock's <laughs> vlogger was right. Maybe there were three people in that group of twenty. <laughs> at, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for a fun Saturday show that I didn't plan, and I uh, appreciate it. Uh, I'll be looking for your, forward to your next video, Jim. Thank you. Hey, by the way, before you go, when when can we look forward to the next video? Uh, probably <laughs> midweek, so like Wednesday. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. appreciate it. Yeah, take it easy, guys. Later, right, buddy.